Can you tell me what you had for breakfast this morning? I had some shreddies. Oh, perfect. I, want I haven't even had breakfast. Well, you know, no. I can't, that makes me feel a bit sick. I can't eat that early. Over the past few years, I have noticed a surge of people using electric cargo bikes here in London. I'm talking couriers, food deliverers, florists, even mums. So today I'm meeting up with Laura and I want to find out why she made the leap with her family to get a turn. All right, well, Laura, just first of all, you need to fill me in on why on earth you made the decision to get a turn electric or just a cargo bike. It's all because we, starting, we were starting school and it's a really long walk and our four-year-old can't ride a bike yet. So yeah, to get there, it would have taken us like 43 minutes to walk and you can't drive because it's school street. So we were trying to work out what to do and we were looking at different cargo bikes and the friends of ours have got a turn and it's amazing. And so we thought, let's go for it. The Turn GSD is just one electric cargo bike of many that has helped fuel the movement of car ditches. It can carry two kids, plus groceries, or just a whole load of cargo. It can have two batteries for extended range, handles hills no problem, and can take a whole horde of various accessories, like a pet carrier, cargo tray, and club house forts keep the kids warm. If you want to take a closer look at the spec, then head on over to our online store, or click the link above to check out my review. I learned to cycle when I was a child, but I hadn't really cycled but I started cycling during lockdown Yeah, um, I got a normal bike and that was great and then I got an electric Brompton and that's even better we got this because yeah it's quite heavy it's quite a big hill to go up so yeah now we now have a lot of bikes in our house and so so what about the car situation do you use a car we have got a car it's a really awful car and we drive it to go to see grandparents where it's really tricky to get to so probably like once a month yeah but not in London because where we live you can get everywhere really quickly we're super lucky everything is really close so I'd much rather walk or cycle. So how, how does Benjamin find riding on the back of a turn? He sings all the way to school. So we go past the florist in Herne Hill, Elaine, who's great, and he's always singing. He particularly likes Matilda or Frozen songs. So he does a lot of like waving his arm around, which can be a bit alarming sometimes. But he likes it, it's good, it's quick. You feel quite safe because you kind of keep up with traffic and it's quite a solid bit of bike. So it wasn't a hard transition getting him back onto the back of the bike? No, no. He's been doing that since he was little. So you make it work, it's yeah. fine, whatever weather. It means he can get to places really quickly. I think the biggest disadvantage of these bikes is they're super desirable. So we go to like clubs and stuff where there's no safe bike parking and I'm sometimes nervous to leave it. So I would say that's my biggest concern. But we can, you can get anywhere really. It's really nice to take it into the office because any potholes in London's roads, the wheels are really solid. So Brompton, you kind of, a bit bumpy with this, so you can practically go through anything, touch wood. The, the one downfall is obviously, like you say, is just making sure that it doesn't get nicked. Would you say you've saved money compared to maybe use, like using a car? I think if we walked, it'd be cheaper. Yeah. Cycling, it's probably the most, um, the best way. All our road, everyone on our road cycles to school. So that's really nice. And lots of neighbours cycle to school. It's so a really good community. I think if we drove every day, I'd be really stressed. Herne Hill is a nightmare for cars. Like people queues of traffic. So I think we'd be permanently a bit cross by the time we get to school, at least this way. Generally, it's quite a fun way to get there. And you get there really quick, like five, 10 minutes. And was there ever any hesitation with putting such precious cargo, your son, yeah. on the back of the bike? I think um, people, drivers see him, he's wearing bright yellow jacket, and they generally are really respectful and give us space. I think give it a go, and I think it's quite nice. You know, I live in a, a low traffic neighbourhood where it's a really relaxing start to the journey. There's loads of people on bikes coming both directions, either going to work or going to schools. So that's really nice. If you can make a journey work that's safe for you, you feel comfortable, then I would definitely do it. They're really good bikes. We haven't had to do any maintenance to it. We haven't had any worry about the tires. Yeah, I really recommend it. They are expensive, so they're not obviously in available to everybody but when you look at the price yes it is a lot of money but when you're thinking about somebody who might want to buy a car yeah. actually you know when you kind of sum it up with how much a car costs with like the insurance yeah. and fuel it starts to even out <laughs> For people like Laura who predominantly work from home and have access to amenities locally, the choice to use a bike rather than a car just makes perfect sense. And on average, Laura isn't alone. According to London City Hall, more than two thirds of car journeys made in London could be cycled in under 20 minutes. 
In the UK, the average car journey is just 8.4 miles. As a country, we're just not really traveling far enough to warrant a car to be making these trips. A report from the Office for National Statistics and Nimble Fins revealed that the average cost for a new car ranges anywhere from £12,000 up to £36,000 for UK residents. And figures released by Autotrader earlier this year showed that the average price of a used car is just short of £18,000. Add on running costs like fuel averaged at around £1,435 a year, insurance at around £470 a year, repairs and servicing for £273 a year, plus parking fees, fines, road tax, the numbers begin to add up. I think one of the things about parking bikes here, like in, around here, they're changing it, which is good, but the parking a bike is almost more expensive than, I can't remember the calculation, parking a car. So yeah, that's something that needs to change. But the good thing about these bikes is that you, we've got quite a narrow hallway. We're, we're super lucky to have a hallway. I know people live in flat maybe to do this but we can just shove it in the hallway so we keep it inside um, and then when we go away we tend to bolt it down to lots of things but yeah that's I think another thing to think about they're quite good for, if you've got a narrow hallway they're not they're not as wide to get in and out but I would want to lug it up and down stairs. Not only is it um, world building in a sense that you've got this community around yeah, yeah, you who yeah. also do the same so there's like a sort of a, a community of riders there's yeah. also uh, the fact that you get quicker commutes yeah. and it's a bit of a head clearer as well, getting on the bike. It's really good. It's like, come back to your desk, log on, and you feel like it's been a really nice start to the day. And yeah, and the fact you can pull up right outside the school, which if you're in a car, you cannot do that. It's nice you see the same people every morning and on a Friday, have, meet a friend for a coffee um, before the work starts. That's really fun. We all gather together. For anybody who maybe is thinking about doing this and maybe they want to like switch the car out, would you recommend it? I, I don't think kids get a lot of joy from being in the back seat of a car, but that's my personal view. As in, my son says it's really boring, but I would say it's much more fun and they're really easy to use. With cities across across the world investing heavily in more infrastructure for micromobility, it's getting easier and easier to get around on an electric bike. And no, you don't need £8,000 to buy something like the Turn GSD, which of course is one of the top of the range electric cargo bikes, which we are very proud to stock at electricheads.com. But there are much easier and more accessible and affordable ways of getting an electric cargo bike. You can fit a child seat to almost any electric bike. Now Fuel, they do a really good range of comfortable child seats that can fit on a bunch of e-bikes like the new Gen 345, which we also stock on electro heads, which means that any parent could be doing the school run in style. There's also folding electric bikes like the Buxton Pro E and the Astali E20. They can accommodate a child seat, which means that you can do the school run and have the option of being able to fold down your bike and store it where you need to, whether that be at home or in the office. Or if classic electric bike styling is more your thing, then you can go for bikes such as the Ampere Tora S or the Astali E28. Now, both of these come with front suspension as an added option and they also come with gears as well so it means a comfy ride and also it's much easier tackling hillier terrain. All of these options can be spread over three payments with Klarna so it doesn't have to be a huge upfront cost and if you want to you can also buy a child seat and a bike as a bundle and you're going to be getting a discount so make sure to put in the bike and a child seat put in cool kids as a code at checkout and you'll get a special deal. Listening to you, it's just it just bolsters my opinion that more people need to be getting on bikes like this and out of cars. It's just such a no-brainer. Absolutely. We went to Ghent on holiday and um, there were so many people on turns, on the, the, the Belgian equivalent of turns. They were just everywhere. They could just leave them outside cafes and restaurants and things and not worry. And it was amazing. It was just like a different way of living. So what they've done in Ghent is fantastic. You know, what they're doing in London is really good, but um, there's obviously more to do. But yeah, I think, yeah, everyone will give it a go. It'll be amazing. Take all the cars off the road and just have lots of electric bikes. Oh, I can't agree more. Air pollution, you know, every time we ride our bike, that's less air pollution, obviously. And that's really, I feel like that's a responsible thing to do as well, living in a city when there's loads of people who are breathing in poor air. Yeah. That's my uh, view on that Indeed. one. Obviously not everybody can, but if you can cycle, that's my view. It's so refreshing to talk to somebody like Laura, a mum who isn't afraid to get her kid on the back of a bike and who can really see the benefits of what that brings, not only to herself, to her child, but to the community. It's 
an exciting event every time you get on a bike and you get out. And it also means that you can experience the world around you rather than being sat in a metal box, AKA the car, you can feel the wind on your face. You can actually make eye contact with real people. And the fact that there is a community around Laura means that cycling as a co-op becomes just a much more of an enjoyable thing to do and it just makes London a less lonelier place. It means that you're getting more exercise, you're doing quicker commutes, you're not sat stuck in traffic. And actually, it's getting a young child used to being on a bike, used to being on the roads, which inevitably is gonna create future generations of cyclists. And to be honest, car companies, they need to be scared. Thank you.